afternoon YouTube here with you on the Wednesday afternoon sitting in the uh, McDonald's drive-thru getting ready to get some food and do an eating flapping video won't that be fun I know Bill will be liking it won't you Bill I right, can see we're on the, uh, the the innermost drive through lane they have two you know this is something that we really figured out about McDonald's they have two drive through lanes <laughs> but then it goes down to one lane so you know what happens then <laughs> I, mean, I understand that they they alternate the orders but still you know, it just doesn't seem right to me all right I'm gonna cut this off and get my food and I'll go to my good place and we'll be back shortly back again YouTube I'm here behind CVS once more uh, there's a little pull off here I didn't go into that lot that uh, has all the cars in it they've really filled that lot up a lot let me show you what I'm talking about you can see there's cars galore over there and a lot of them have flat tires that's just like I say it must be an overflow place for one of the car dealers or maybe even all the car dealers who knows all right, I have uh, get me adjusted here just right I think that's pretty good uh, I had to stop by McDonald's as you probably know already and let me turn this down a little bit more I can still hear it it kind of distracts me a little bit um, Bill I said said that he was looking forward to this video I hope the uh, other people are too I, I ain't doing this boy these fries are hot I got a um, I've been kind of hooked on these lately I got a chicken tender meal, um, five piece chicken tender meal. I like the uh, McDonald's chicken tenders, they're pretty good. But uh, anyway, I felt the need to um, say some things about uh, how I was trained in electronics. Uh, not that there's any question, you know, nobody has said, hey, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. You know, that's not the way it's working, but it's, um, I wasn't trained in traditional electronics, I don't think. You know, I, without, that's the only way I know because that's the way I was trained, but, um, gotta get every last fry out of this bag. You know how that works. Um, what I was saying, I went to a, vocational school technical school in Versailles Indiana and I may go ahead and flash a picture of that up and um, as an adult I uh, I attended the evening classes and uh, electronics technology 101 as they were um, the uh, oh there they are I couldn't couldn't find the other honey mustards all right um, like honey mustard that uh, I never did use dipping sauce with my chicken tenders but they came one day with honey mustard and I'm not the type of person that likes to waste things so I tried it now I'm hooked on honey mustard <laughs> so let me open one up so I can get a good full flavor from it mmm. Mm. So anyway, now these are the these chicken tenders come in this little uh, thing, and the sa sauce is supposed to be right up here, but they never put it in there. Never ever have put it in there. But these are some good chicken tenders, let me tell you. Anyway, so I attended this school, and uh, like I said. I didn't think anything about it. I went under what they call the CETA program. Some of you guys may remember that. I think it was a government funded thing. And uh, I got all my schooling paid for. It didn't cost me a thing. And in fact, I got, was it a Pell Grant? I think it was Pell Grant or something like that. That ended up buying me some test equipment, things like that. And um, it was overall a pretty good deal. I had I had wanted to go 
into electronics after, well, in high school. And lo and behold, I ended up getting married. Kind of had to, but anyway, you know, that's, that's another story. I even put a little honey mustard on my fries sometimes. But, um, the classes I attended, like I said, were evening classes. They had, um, morning classes that was geared towards the high school students. And, of course, there were quite a few high schools around that made use of the school. So, anywho, the uh, guy that that taught in the uh, daytime named Charlie and uh, he was a TV guy I guess that's all he ever knew all he ever did so needless to say the um, classes were geared towards TV repair now you know at the time when he started probably I'm saying maybe 60s and 70s. TV repair was a big booming business. Um, by the time I came along in late 70s, early 80s, TV repair was going out, out the door pretty quick. But electronics in general was good. So I figured, you know, well, I'll learn about electronics, I'll worry about TV. So the guy that did the uh, last, the night classes was Chuck Lenhart. Chuck knew Charlie's agenda and he tried his best to teach more electronics than he did TV but you know in the end TV was where it was at you know so so anyway the only other thing that they pretty much pushed was FCC licensing they figured if they get you out of there with an FCC license and knowing how to work a uh, repair of TV, then, you know, that was their job was done. So, that was the brunt, brunt of my training. I'm not saying we didn't do radio, we did. But primarily it was TVs. So, and as others tried to do, they trained you to answer questions correctly on the FCC exam. Not so much about the theory behind it, but how to how to answer those questions and get them right and get that license. So that's the, the kind of a training I had. I tried to ask a lot of questions, the things I didn't understand, because I'm the kind of guy that uh, I don't understand something until I get it through my fixed goal. I'm not going to be good at it. I mean, I'm just not built that way where I can just go in and do that and do this and you know hey you know I've got it done that's it but uh, so anywho I was just looking at there's a like a little park over there I never noticed that before maybe that's what they just built or something anyway <laughs> so for basically two years and that's what my training was we touched very briefly on digital electronics and logic gates things like that we didn't stay on it long enough to, to learn anything it was just basically here's what's out there you know if you want to learn more go read a book you know whatever so now like I said Chuck was uh, tried his best to get more into electronics in general instead of just TVs but suffice to say when I left that institute with my certificate of completion or whatever they called it I was all about TVs and that's what we ended up doing going to business um, <laughs> repairing TVs and I put you know my business I had it was Swiss TV and stereo And because uh, I knew enough about, you know, radios and things like that, I figured I'd do that too. And I, I did get quite a car stereo, especially. 
kids would love the uh, power chips out of them, power amp chips. Replaced a lot of those down there. I don't know. So, I just thought you might, might be interested in, you know, because I know some of you are thinking that, you know, I don't know as much as I should. All right, you know. about certain things but I don't have a lot of experience in anything except for TV and I, my experience is not that much there I was in business about a couple of years maybe two or three at the most and I worked for another shop for not even six months so before it burnt down <laughs> but like I said so my extension my uh, experience in in uh, electronics is not that much most mostly just what I've done over the years and stuff like that. I've always been interested in it, like I said, even when I was younger. I built my first electronic kit when I was in high school. It was a uh, Lafayette, couldn't think of, tube stereo amp. And uh, I've been trying to find one of those those things. There's one on eBay now, I think, for 275 I paid like, well, actually, my parents bought it for, for me for Christmas because it was less than $40. I'm not paying 200 almost $300 for that. That's ridiculous. But I would like to have one, you know, just for nostalgia. So anyway, that's that. And yeah, I did get my FCC license. I managed to get a second class. FCC license. At that time, there was first class, second class, and um, I think some other kind of lesser one. But they were happy that I went ahead and passed that, so that was, that was good. Um, that turned into, later on, FCC reorganized or whatever, as they often do. And they changed all the first and second classes into general class. So that's why I have now as a general class. It's supposed to be a lifetime license. I couldn't even tell you where mine's at, tell you the truth. But that allows you to work on commercial trans, 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 transmitters. I got transformers on the brain. So, if I, I almost got a job in a BB. Uh, radio station, but I guess I didn't impress the guy too much. Their lead tech or whatever he. They were basically looking for somebody. He was out of Louisville, I believe, and they were basically looking for somebody local that could take care of things. Either when he couldn't be there, or for whatever reason, you know. So. That never turned out to be much. I would have liked it done just for the experience. But anyway, pretty good stuff. I like this. So that's a that's where I'm from as far as uh, electronics. Again, I like experimenting with them, playing around. I know enough to get myself in trouble. And I know enough to keep myself out of trouble, too, so that helps. CBS is making a lot of noise over there. Probably got a dirty, a dirty mouth and don't even know. Getting a cold sore. You get one every summer. I think it's in the sun. But I don't get out in the sun that much, but anyway. So, needless to say, I didn't, didn't make a career out of electronics because at the time I had two small children, been divorced, and uh, the small town I lived in was, you know, enough to basically pay the house payment and live, I won't say comfortably, but 
I, you know, I wasn't getting behind. But an opportunity opened up across the street from my shop, which was the sheriff's office, local sheriff's office. And they talked me into doing, doing some uh, dispatching on the weekend. So during the week, I would work at the shop. And then on the weekend, I would dispatch. And that was kind of nice. I, I didn't mind doing that. You would not believe the characters you meet in a place like that. But again, it was an experience, so I didn't mind. And then something happened. Um, at the time, like I said, Switzerland County was a very poor county. Maybe was not a very uh, thriving town. But it was where we chose to live. So, at the time, <clears throat> the um, circumstances allowed the sheriff to hire a full-time dispatcher. And there was me and one other guy that volunteered and did it. And uh, he was an older guy. And uh, so they decided to offer it to me. So I said, you know, it's one of them deals where I, I, you see the handwriting on a wall. TV was going nowhere. Every TV that came in that um, needed any kind of serious repair work, a tube type TV, you know, I, ha I felt obligated to tell people that, hey, you can go down to Walmart and pick up a Korean branded TV for a lot less than it's going to cost to get this one fixed. Now, there were a few that for one reason or other, usually it was a cabinet. You know, oh, we like the cabinet, you know. Okay, so I tried my best to talk them out of it because, you know, you can fix it and then maybe 10 days down the road, it's gonna need something else. So anyway, I went ahead and decided, uh, you know, it's better to take that paycheck, regular paycheck, than risk, you know, my kids' future on not having money for food and things like that. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and take the job. I didn't close the shop right away, but it wasn't too long after that I did. So that was my foray into business. And, uh, I'm sorry I did it, because like I said, it was an experience. I enjoyed working on the stuff. But I have learned that, and I know a lot of you know this, as soon as you do something for a living, it's not as much fun you know that you have to go in here and repair X amount of TVs or stereos or whatever they are so that you can eat that month or whatever. It's just not as fun. It just The mystique is not there for that. I mean, I did it, but, you know, I quickly, you know, in your high school you think, oh, you know, I could do this for a living and I'd love it. <laughs> well, you're stupid in high school. Let's face it. So... <laughs> And, uh, you know, you try to tell the kids and all that now. Oh, I know better than that. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> That's another thing about these chicken tenders. They're very chewy. Not really sure that's a good thing. But they're tasty enough, you know. I'm going to show you this place I was talking about. Uh, it looks like some kind of shelter. And there's a nice fence around it. I may have to check it out for next time. Doesn't look bad. So where was I? <clears throat> I guess that's pretty much it. I just, like I said, my, my training was mostly geared towards televisions. I did get a lot of tube theory. And, uh, but again, at that time, everything was solid state. TVs were going from modules to chips. Um, you get a big console TV and open up there'd be a little circuit board in the bottom of it like this you know something big enough for the high, vo high voltage uh, flyback things like that that was it they still had the CRTs the big CRTs on but there wasn't much to them got to the point where you could buy a whole board and just replace the whole board for about as cheap as anything, so. And when I say cheap, 
that time probably over a hundred dollars which you know when you can go down like say Walmart and buy one uh, brand new TV for less than two hundred dollars why would you why would you even think about that but you know again people some people you know, especially there in Switzerland County where I live they were more older people and apparently they still are because I was down there visiting mom the other day and it's just nothing has changed at that place at all. I'm just glad I got out of there when I did. But anyway, so I worked at the sheriff's office for, well, all told, 13 years. And during that time, I saw several sheriffs come and go. That was fun. Each one was different, obviously. They had their priorities. And one came in, and uh, it was about the time the 911 thing was going through everywhere. And told the dispatchers that at that time there was more than one, more than me. They told them that you're all going to be medical dispatchers. I looked at him and I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> so that was pretty much the end of my uh, sheriffing career. Uh, I, he transfer, transferred me to uh, the late shift, midnight shift or whatever, which I didn't care. You know, you basically on that shift you watch TV all night and read or whatever you wanted to do. I used to bring in all kinds of projects to work on. And I'd have the whole whole office cluttered with stuff when they bring in prisoners. <laughs> and I'd have to cl clean it all off and stuff. But it was fun. Like I said, experience, that was basically what it was. But uh, one day, I see it would have been in the late 80s. It might have been the early 90s. Yeah, it would have been the early 90s. The Postal Service Somebody put up a notice that the Postal Service was conducting uh, exams for a rural carrier associate at the high school. And I'd always kind of liked the idea of being a rural carrier because, you know, I thought that would be a good job. You know, you go in there and get your mail and go out and deliver it in the car. It's like you're all by yourself, kind of your own boss. <laughs> of course, again, live and learn. But anyway, I went out and took the test. And what I was told, I got the highest score. There were quite a few people there. I'm not bragging. Just the locale that we lived in. Anyway, I, uh, I called for an interview over in Carrollton, which is across the river from, from Vivi. But there's a dam up, up river from Vivi a little ways called Markland Dam. And you go up there, I think it's seven miles up there, and then I think it was like 14 miles altogether back to uh, Carrollton on the other side. So, but anyway, I went in and had the uh, interview, and that's when he told me I had the top score. But he said the uh, the guy that uh, they were looking at for the position was had taken the test too, and had scored lower than me. But he was a veteran, so they give five points for that, and that made his score a little higher. So. So I went ahead and took the tour, you know, they give you the little tour of the office, post office. Took it hand left. Yeah, that was it. Didn't think much more about it really. And um, I guess it was about a month later, I got another call. And it's asked if I want to come in for a second interview. So I think it was the same postmaster. I told him I said thought you hired the other guy. just, we did. He didn't work out. <laughs> okay. So, and I was told later that he wanted to walk his route. He didn't want to drive a car. Okay. That's a long route to, to walk. Anyway, um, I got hired. So, the rest is history, as they say. I worked there for almost 18 years. Or maybe it was over 18 years. See, 92, I think, till 2010. Yeah, about 18 years. So, 
I can't complain too much about it. I, you know, it was a good thing it happened it, it, when it did. It, it, you know, the kids had, had gone to live with their mother in Cincinnati. Because they were smarter than me. Not really. I understand because you got bright lights in a big city compared to Vivi. <laughs> what kid wouldn't want to go there and, you know, hang out? So Anyway, they both um, went that way, so I stayed in Vivi. Ended up buying my niece's house because she wanted out from under because her brother had gotten his own place and she really couldn't afford the rent, I guess. So I figured, well, you know, real estate, we can't lose with that. I'm going about that. <laughs> anyway, I stayed there until I retired, so. That's why I got into YouTube when I was there, so. But not bad. I don't know how long I've talked. Probably way too long. I don't think I'm going to finish these chicken tenders because I'm almost to the bottom of the fries. And they're not gone. There's still three or four left. When you order a five-piece meal, they give you more than five pieces. Which I kind of like. And they also give you the large Cokes now because I guess all the soft drinks at McDonald's are the same price. So I guess they just figure everybody wants a large. <laughs> That's okay with me. <clears throat> all right, gotta wipe my mouth one more time. See if I've lost my napkin. All right, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have not, you know. You ask for your money back. <laughs> Won't do you any good, but you can ask. So, I guess that ought to be about it. I was hoping maybe a train would pass, but you now can't get that lucky, I guess. Our trains seem to run at night. I, I don't know what it is, but I go to bed and I hear them horns going off left and right. Kind of puts me to sleep anymore. <laughs> but, so anyway, that's all to do me. You guys have a great evening, the rest of it. I'm hoping to get back to that uh, wax capacitor and maybe take it out to the garage. You know, I've got a propane tank out, or a torch out there, so <laughs> I may I may do a lucky Larry and try to blow something up. You never can tell. But uh, I don't know when I'll do that. Maybe this evening or tomorrow, sometime. I don't know. My parts for the uh, radio, um, the GE. That I'm hoping to make a transmitter out of. It will be here Friday, so according to the tracking. Uh, Postal Service usually doesn't lie about things like that, but yeah. So I was talking to Bob about the uh, place I ordered from, uh, DigiKey. I didn't realize a lot about that place. You know, I've always, I'm, it's been around since I was in business back in the 80s, whatever. So uh, I just didn't think about it too much, but pretty big place it's uh, I think they said fifth largest in the world fourth largest in this country um, or in North America maybe that's what it was but uh, that's a pretty big place and I, I, I googled it and saw the uh, um, buildings and stuff and it's 3,400 I think employees is what they got so I'm just kind of surprised that they still cater to the hobbyist people that uh, you know have small orders now my both my orders with DigiKey we're under ten dollars shipped as far as the price which is excellent really I mean you stop and think about that that's just uh, I'm not saying that you can't get the same thing at Mauser which you probably can uh, element 14 Newark uh, they've, they've got a pretty good uh, you know postal service type shipping so I was gonna order from them last time and Bob kind of talked me into DigiKey Digi said he's had always good luck with them so that's what I did and then uh, Worked out real good. I'm happy with it. So, I guess that's about it. I keep waiting for some big thing to happen, but nothing's happening. This is Seymour. What can I tell you? Tell you. I was also, I did a little search before I came on the map, trying to find some places, different places 
you know, that I might have sit, sat to do this. So I'm hoping to find a shady spot because I'm sitting out in the sun. Luckily, it's not a bad day. I think it's in the low 80s maybe. But when you're sitting out in the sun, that sun beating down through the windshield, as you can see probably, um, gets a little warm. Not sweating, so I, I can't complain too much. But uh, all right, I have yammered, 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 yammered. So I may have to cut this down a little bit. All right, like I said, Jim, Bill, I hope you really enjoy this, uh, getting to see me eat them chicken tenders and french fries. And I got cookies over there, but those, those will probably be later on tonight. I'm just not, uh, it's, uh, what time is it? I, I ate early tonight just for, as I want to get this done. It's 4.49, it's not even 5 o'clock yet. So I just ate early because, I, for one thing, I want to get this done. For another thing, I just, I, you know, I have noodles in the morning right around 10 o'clock and uh, then I don't eat again until supper time and you know so you've skipped lunch basically now I have been known to eat early like this and then about eight o'clock at night eat more noodles I don't like to do that I don't like going to bed full like that so all right this is going to do it for sure this time you guys have a wonderful wonderful day thank you so much for watching and we will see you Back home, folks.